Hello and welcome to our talk on our ICML paper, Differential Likelihoods for Fast Inversion of Likelihood Free Dynamical Systems. I am Hans Kersting. This is a joint talk, uh, joint paper with Nicolas Kremer, Martin Schie, Christian Daniel, Michael Thiemann, and Philip Hennig. So let's just jump right into it. We start with a summary. So we are concerned with the problem of ODE inverse, ODE inverse problems. And to define an inverse problem, we first have to define the forward problem. And for an ODE inverse problem, you have the ODE forward problem as the forward map. And this works by solving a parameterized ODE. So you have a parameter theta, and given this theta, you have a different ODE with some initial condition, and um, you compute the solution X. So now the inverse problem is just that you have some noisy data, Z, where you have X plus some noise, and the X was computed with some parameter, theta, and from this noisy data, you want to recover the true parameter theta. And um, we noticed in the literature that ODE inverse problems are usually treated as likelihood-free inference problems. So this means that you essentially treat the forward problem as a black box and you assume that you don't really know anything about it. Note here that the likelihood and the forward map are almost synonymous. And in this paper, we argue against this common notion in the literature and say, no, if we use probabilistic numerics, which is an alternative to classical numerics, where you account for the, the numerical errors in the same way you account for statistical errors by probability measures. So if we use probabilistic numerics to account for the numerical forward error, there is a, a likelihood and it's even differentiable. And this has the practical benefit that we can now use new gradient-based methods uh, to solve the inverse problem. For example, gradient descent or like gradient-based sampling methods. And these perform very well. So that's the, our summary. So let's set the stage so that you can understand our construction. Okay, so let's first recall what an inverse problem is again. I just already said it, but here you see a graphic and you have the parameter on the left and the simulation um, on the right. And so for every parameter, you get a different simulation. Um, and uh, the forward model, model map is just computing the simulation. And the inverse map is recovering a true parameter, theta true, from the simulation f of theta true plus some noise. And it's very important to note that uh, the forward problem is well posed, but the inverse problem is ill posed, which means that for every theta, you get a well defined f of theta if you go from the left to the right. But if you go from the right to the left, there are parameters, let's say theta 1, theta 2, which are not equal, where f of theta 1 is equal to f of theta 2. Hence, it is ill posed. And so for the forward problem, which is well posed, you just have to compute an approximation of the simulation. So this is really a question, not so much of classical machine learning, but of numerical analysis, applied mathematics approximation theory. However, if you go from the right to the left, if you solve the inverse problem, then we're talking about an ill-posed problem. And then it's, you don't even know what you're approximating because it could be multiple things, right? So here, uh, multiple things which are equally good. So here, you, you, are, you, you have to use statistics or machine learning. And this mix of numerical and statistical uh, estimation invites a treatment by probabilistic numerics, which also accounts for the numerical error as if it were a statistical error. I mean, otherwise, you can't really compute those in a joint framework in classical numerics. OK. And so inverse problems are called likelihood-free if they are forward map is too expensive to approximate correctly. And so let's now think about if this could be the case for ODEs. So for ODEs, you have an ODE, you the parameterized ODE, like on the summary so the slide earlier, under some initial condition, right? And for every theta, for every parameter, you have a well-defined solution. And by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we even have a formula for it. And it's well-defined. 
And so if we would just like compute this formula, integrate this curve, then we, we have a perfect high fidelity forward map, F, which just takes a parameter and maps it to the solution of the ODE. However, this is a numerical problem and we have to approximate with a non-zero step size H and the bigger the step size, the lower the fidelity. And there's a trade-off between trying out many parameters and having a small step size. So in practice, we usually need a bit bigger step size. And this comes with a numerical error, right? So for example, when you use the classical solver in MATLAB and so on, Rungu Kutcher, what happens is that you compute polynomial approximations to the true curve. So here you see a true curve in black and you see an orange line, which is an approximation. And then you just keep going with a linear and then a quadratic and then a third degree approximation. And your green curve is your final curve and you have an error. And the bigger your step size H, the bigger the error between the green curve and the black curve. And this is absolutely inevitable, right? So in practice, so you can let H H go to zero. And so in classical numerics, for example, when you use the rule of your ODE inverse problems are likelihood free. And we would agree to the notion in the literature that we have a uh, highly nonlinear likelihood free inverse problem here. However, now comes our magic trick. So we noted that inverse problems are called likelihood free if F is too expensive to actually approximate exactly. Fair enough. And then we noted that ODE inverse problems have don't account for the numerical error uh, and they have a, a numerical error. And so they're likelihood free because we can't, uh, we don't know uh, how well our approximation is, how good our approximation is. But now probabilistic numerics comes to our rescue. Probabilistic numerics is a framework to capture the numerical error, just like the statistical error, no difference really. And in this way, we can go from the likelihood free inverse problem to an inverse problem with a differentiable likelihood or differentiable forward map. And um, this, I, I will explain how this works in a minute, but just note that this is a big practical benefit because now we can go from density estimation methods or IBC, which are very generic, very slow methods to fast methods like Hamiltonian, Langevin, MCMC, or just plain old gradient descent if you want to. Keep it simple. All right, so what happens actually with the probabilistic numeric step? So first recall here in equation one that we have noisy data of a derivative, and that's our statistical likelihood, if you wish. And um, now if we use probabilistic numerics, we compute the forward map with a tool called Gaussian ODE filtering, check out the references. And um, so this gives us a likelihood uh, which accounts for both the numerical and the statistical variance. So the there are two advantages of this, and you see the uh, equation two is the formula. First one is that we have P from Gaussian ODE filtering, with, which accounts for the numerical or epistemic uncertainty, um, which is added to the statistical variance. Right, it's both approximation errors, so no difference, right? And then there is the mean, which is x0 plus j theta, where j is just an estimate of the Jacobian of your forward map theta to x theta around some support point around which we develop, kind of like a Taylor expansion. Um, and so uh, this implies a gradient and Hessian estimator, if we plug this Jacobian J into um, our log likelihood, we get the gradient and Hessian estimator of the log likelihood, which you see in equation three. And this is precisely what enables new methods now, right? Uh, but first let's visualize this. So here you see a plot of these uncertainties. And in the top row, you see, uh, in the top row, you see the probabilistic numerics version where the numerical variance is added. At the bottom row, you just see the plain old likelihood free statistical one. And in the left column, you see a large step size age. In the right column, you see a um, smaller step size age. And you see that the true uh, parameter theta, uh, 
which is uh, represented by the black cross, lies within the uh, region of high probability only for the aware version. And if the step size is small, the, uh, the, if the step size is big, the problem is particularly pronounced, um, as you can see at the bottom left in the left row. Okay, and the second advantage is these gradients and Hessians. And here you see them, and you see the gradient and the Newton step directions with the Hessian. You see them on a um, example system, a locker Volterra. And we can see that these uh, gradients and Newton steps indeed point towards the mode of the distribution. So even though they're approximations, they appear to be useful. And our hope is now, what we're gonna test in some experiments, that these, um, these gradients are indeed useful to make these methods more sample efficient. Because the bottleneck for ODE inverse problems is that you have to try so many samples and it's just too expensive. Um, so in this plot you see um, a comparison of likelihood free sampling versus gradient based sampling. So that's Hamiltonian Monte Carlo for gradient based sampling and random walk Metropolis Hastings for likelihood free. And you see that the blue dots move way faster to the mode than the orange ones. So uh, yeah, our proposal is a lot better than the likelihood free ones. And the methods which you see enumerated on the left, which are our new methods, with a gradient, we're going to test them now on some standard benchmark systems. Okay, so here uh, you see our results for sampling on three benchmark systems, Locker, Volterra, Protein Transduction, Glucose, Optics, and Yeast. And the blue line is uh, the likelihood-free random walk metropolis method. Okay, and the orange and the green line are uh, preconditioned Langevin and preconditioned Hamiltonian Monte Carlo. The preconditioning is done with the Hessian, of course. Okay, and we would like to see that uh, these uh, lines cover and stay in regions of high likelihood. Uh, yeah, um, and we can see that this is the case for the gradient-based versions for the orange and green one, and the blue one the likelihood one just get lost in regions of low probability, falls off regions of high probability, and so the orange and green ones perform a lot better. So here the gradients for sampling seem to help in every case. So that's a su successful set of experiments. So what about optimization? What about if we use gradient descent on Newton? I mean, this is a, maybe the, the, the difference is even more strong, strongly pronounced here. So here you see, uh, again, the blue line is the likelihood-free optimization method, random search, and the orange and green line are gradient descent and Newton's methods, so our new methods. And you see that on all three systems, the likelihood-free version doesn't learn at all, which is hardly surprising because if you don't have a gradient, you usually don't do maximum likelihood optimization, right? So it doesn't work. But if you use the gradients, we can learn a lot better, right? You see that both lines are better, and in particular, the ones where we precondition with the Hessian, which seems important, drastically outperform the, the random search, the blue line. So yeah, we, we hope that this experiment actually shows that we can, we can now do maximum likelihood estimation in uh, ODE inverse problems, which previously was not, necess not uh, possible because you have no gradients. Right? So we also consider this set of experiments a big success. Right, so lastly, I would like to thank my collaborators. Uh, first of all, of course, my joint primary author, Nicolas Kremer, who is also from the PhD student at the University of Tübingen. And second, our, um, uh, our supervisor, Philip Hennig, and uh, our collaborators from Bosch Center for AI, Martin Schick, Christian Daniel, and Michael Thiemann, where I did some work on this during an internship. Um, yeah, thanks for listening. Um, check out our paper for more details. There are some theorems also on our approximations. And um, if you're interested in uh, the engine of probabilistic numerics, which, which drives uh, this trick, have a look at these references. Thank you very much.